shocked. It's degrading, James moaned. What is? asked Edward. The fat controller promises me the express, and what happens? We're confined to shunting. That's what. Gordon and Henry certainly appreciate it, replied Edward. Besides, I don't mind. <laughs> you wouldn't, James sniffed. But I'm tired of it. Thomas getting a branch line doesn't mean the rest of us should suffer. I was meant to take a goods train along the main line, smiled Edward. But if you really need a change. With how broadly James grinned, you'd have thought the grimy trucks were gleaming coaches. Beyond the top of Gordon's Hill is a place called Kildane. When built, it was just another station on the main line. Recently, however, a new branch line had been constructed, turning it into a junction. Normally, James flew past the station. Today, he had to leave some trucks there. As he drew to a halt, he took in the full scope of it. The rails snaked into the horizon, bound for the towering mountains. Thick, black wires were suspended above the line by poles. Save for a faint, faraway hum, all was silent. My, James stammered, this is charming. The humming gradually became louder. In the distance, a shape appeared, growing larger the closer it came. What is that? James trembled. Drawing alongside was the strangest-looking engine he'd ever seen. It was long, sloped at both ends, and with a cab in the middle. Atop it were what looked like long-legged metal insects, which clung to the overhead wires. James was speechless. He tried not to show it, but he was frightened. Save for the droning hum, the engine was utterly lifeless. Greetings. The mechanical voice made James jump. Oh, uh, hello, uh, whatever you are. Please confirm role as goods engine. I'm not just a goods engine, James fussed. I pull coaches, too. Irrelevant. Confirm previous query. Fine, James gritted. I suppose I am your goods engine. Analyzing. Response accepted. Deposit trucks into siding for transfer. Without another word, the strange engine buzzed off. A mechanical engine? Edward asked in the shed that night. I swear, Edward, it was, James fretted. I've never seen anything like it. It must have been terrifying. I didn't say I was scared, James scowled defensively. Well, Edward trembled, if I saw that engine, I'd be frightened. You must remain vigilant, James. Who knows what it may be capable of? James wasn't keen on visiting the junction again. He shunted in the yard, rather compliantly, for several days. When he next ventured out with a goods train, meeting the strange engine was all he could think of. As he approached Kildane, Edward passed with his coaches, looking rather disturbed. Welcome. Please board for service to Peel Godred. James's boiler went cold. At the platform was a bigger, boxier engine with the same metallic insects dancing overhead. Passengers milled happily about the platform. James couldn't understand how they remained so calm. Salutations, came the voice. Please excuse me, punctuality is vital. 
With that, the engine hummed off up the line. James was eager to part with his trucks, but his hopes were dashed. The station master ran up. I'm sorry, he called, but those trucks you've brought hold vital supplies for the mountain railway. The engine that was meant to collect them has failed. Take them up the line right away. Y yes, sir, James replied, trying to sound as brave as he could. He was soon traveling up the line. He gulped, eyeing the wires that loomed overhead. Right, he thought. Drop off the trucks, then back down. No one, or no thing, will know I've... Wait, what's that? As he quietly approached the mountain railway terminus, he heard bickering voices. Salutations! What machine have you ever heard say salutations? I've never heard any machine say anything. Besides, you didn't tell me what I had to say. I improvised. <laughs> Last time I let you go off script. The two strange engines sat in a nearby shed, sounding decidedly less mechanical. They were too busy quarreling to notice James. A devious grin crossed his smoke box. The engine shrieked. Tiny showers of sparks leapt from their roofs. What'd you do that for? growled the smaller one. And why are you on our line? Why are you running around playing metal monsters? Oh dear, sighed the larger engine. We never meant to frighten you. I wasn't scared, James spluttered. People think electric engines come from another world so we thought we'd have some fun. Your blue friend saw right through us. James stared. You mean Edward strung me along this whole time? There was a pause before the two engines erupted into laughter. James stared, perplexed. Perhaps we should start off on a better wheel, laughed the bigger engine. I'm Edith, and this is Eleanor. A pleasure, Eleanor smiled. What do you think of our branch? Super, isn't it? It's certainly, uh, different, James finished lamely. Do us a favor, Eleanor winked. Don't let on about our little act to the others. I've always wanted to try it on those really big engines. Your secret is safe with me, chuckled James. As he headed back down the branch line, James smiled. He was eager for the next meeting with his unique new friends. More importantly, he couldn't wait for Gordon and Henry to have a shock of their own. <laughs>